prayer. I've seen many people started spiritually, but because of prayer, they went into the flesh. Because after a while, they wanted people to know that they were prayer champions. So the prayer they were praying before to know God became the reason why they fell back into the flesh. And when they come to the place of prayer, some of them are so fleshly that they will not even pray until you ask them to lead prayer. So when they come to the prayer meeting, they pocket their hands and they are strolling. When you say, come and lead prayers, then they wear their prayer garment and they begin to pray in capital letters. And when they are done leading prayers and they go back, they stop the prayer. The prayer has made them to become carnal. The goal of travail is not travail in itself. It is the children that Zion begs. And that's why I told you, if a woman is in labor and she doesn't end up delivering, that labor might kill her. Because the labor in itself is a journey into betting. It's when the child comes out that the labor was relevant. Many people die in labor because they were unable to bring forth. And in prayer, if your prayer does not translate to betting, that prayer can destroy you. And many people have become useless because they were praying purposeless prayers. Because they were praying and they didn't know why they prayed. So in the course of praying, they became carnal men. In the course of praying, they became proud men. In the course of praying, they became useless men because they didn't know what prayer is about. So we come for conferences like this and we want to show you why we pray. So when you leave the conference, you are not encouraged to stop praying. You are rather encouraged to pray more. But this time, you are praying with a focus. This time, you are praying with something in view because you know that the prayer is a means to an end. And until you get that end, the prayer was not necessary. This is why we emphasize the betting of Zion. Before I talk about the dynamics of prayer, I just want to mention to you four few things that you will bet in prayer. And as I began in the morning, I told you when a man accurately begins to pray, the first thing that man bets is the will of God. Because until you find the will of God, you will not be relevant in life. So prayer makes men relevant. But the prayer that makes men relevant is the prayer that finds the will of God. So the next time you go to the prayer room, your focus is not 10 hours. 10 hours is an opportunity for you to travel. But at the end of 10 hours, you want to find out what is God saying about my life? What is God saying about my family? What is God saying about my city? What is God saying about my generation? If that becomes your focus, you will be shocked that you may be on the prayer altar for three months. Because the will of God is a secret. It's not on the street. The Bible said the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. He will show them his covenant. And in Jeremiah chapter 33, 33 verse 3, he said, Call upon me and I will answer. But there is something more than answers to prayer. He said, I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. So if a man begins to pursue the will of God, sometimes even the 10 hours prayer will not be enough. Because when they adopt praying for 10 hours, you are still journeying. Maybe the time they say amen, that's when your angel begins to talk. So you will not join them in ending the prayer. Why they stop, you will still be praying. But if you don't know the will of God, you will pride yourself with time and you will not join in. Until you find the will of God, your prayer will not matter much. The Bible spoke of Simeon who was in the temple. This man knew prayer so much that Simeon, having understood the will of God for his life, shut down everything. And then he was in the temple praying. It was when Jesus came that we now discover that some men were invoking Jesus out of heaven. They were the one creating the balance of time for the Son of Man to come. And when Jesus showed up, he said, now I can depart in peace. My eyes have seen the salvation of God. So when you see Simeon in the temple, you think he's useless. He's not useless. He has discovered that him is not a politician. He has discovered that him is not a public speaker. So why some other people are preaching from place to place is beautiful. But that's what they found on the altar of prayer. When Simeon saw his own template, he wasn't traveling from place to place. So you may come on earth and look at Simeon and say, Kai, this man has wasted his life. Why others are making progress in ministry? He is where he is 10 years ago. The guy's journey in life is not to travel. His journey is to see the salvation of God. So for that, he will be on the altar until he sees the salvation of God. And the moment he sees it, he has fulfilled destiny. You may think he failed on earth, but in heaven, he passed his test. And there is another man that God will tell him, you can't be in the tent because his Saka will be blessed in his travels. Zabulu will be blessed in the tent. So if a man discovers that his success is in journeying, God will be opening doors for him. You will look at him and say, Kai, this person is ambitious. You don't know what you are talking about. When he went to heaven, they showed him 
that his job is to leap from one city to another and to bring the counsel of God. The day that man stops traveling, he begins to fail. So why one man is in the temple, another man is traveling? The difference is not in the traveling or in the city. The difference is the isolation of the will of God for their life. There is another brother that may start praying with you in the temple. And after a while, he enters into politics. You look at him and say, Kai, this guy has backslided. He didn't backslide. He discovered what was written concerning him. If that man becomes an apostle, he will fail. Because in the, te in the, in the template of heaven, they didn't write an apostle on his name. You know in our generation now, every young man who is on fire is an apostle. It's because we have not found the will of God. So the moment somebody catches fire, either he becomes an apostle or he becomes a prophet. Meanwhile, some of the people calling themselves apostles are politicians. What they should learn now is to find out how to mobilize support. Is to find out what is the problem of society and think creatively to solve it. But they have not prayed into the will of God. So the moment they caught fire, they were dislocated from their destiny. And they were made apostles when they should be politicians. There are some men that are running around that they are intercessors. Meanwhile, they are businessmen. Why they should be thinking on how to do apprenticeship and open shops in Lagos and Ibadan. They are on the altar praying every day and saying, we will see revival. We will see revival. The channel of revival you should mount is the economic channel. But while you are on the altar, you are wasting away. That's why I told you, many will be destroyed by praying. Except as we find the will of God. And if you do not find the will of God, you can't make progress in life. Because you see, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I ordained you. I sanctified you to be a prophet. So I'm not moved if you told me you have prayed for five years. I will ask you what does God want you to do. If you don't know it, it means you have not journeyed in your prayers. I'm not moved if you tell me you have prayed for ten years. If you are still confused about life, you don't know what prayer is about. The guy who prayed for one month and knows the will of God for his life have made more from prayer than the man who has prayed for ten years and still confused. Because the first child Zion will born on the altar of prayer is the will of God. Number two, I say when you begin to pray, the second force that you mobilize in prayer is the power for destiny. Because it's one thing to see what God wants you to be. It's another thing to mobilize power to fulfill it. Because destiny is prosecuted by power. When there is no power, you will know what God wants you to be, but a demon can resist you. Paul said, a great and effectual door has been opened unto me. He said, but there are many adversaries. That you know what God wants you to do is not a guarantee that you will fulfill it. There has to be a power. And that power does not come from heaven. You know, many people think when they pray, heaven will open, power will come down. The power for your destiny is on your inside. He said, God is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all you can ask or think, according to the power that is at work on your inside. If you don't mobilize that power on the altar, you will know you are supposed to be a governor. When you are on your de deathbed at 70, you will discover that you didn't enter. Because it's not enough to be told. There is a power that will take you there. You will know that you are supposed to be a prophet to the nations. You will know that you are supposed to be a voice to the nation. But if you will get there, you must mobilize power. And I began talking to us about power. You know, sometimes the reason we invoke the Greek and the Hebrew is not because we want to sound intelligent. It's because English language is limited. There are many things you will read in English that you, you will take at face value. It's when you do a word study, you understand what he's talking about. There are five powers that make for destiny actualization. The first is dynamis. The second is kratos. The third is energema. The fourth is endunamo. The fifth is elutero. If you don't activate these powers from prayer, you can't succeed. If you are joining on the corridor of the world, there is another layer of power on the world. On the layer of the world, there are three powers that you will activate. One is called exousia. Number two is called iscus. Number three is called metanio. If you are dealing on the corridor of the world, the first thing the world does for you is that it gives you revelation into who you are in Christ. And on the strength of that revelation, you begin to function in authority. That's what we call exousia. Authority comes on the template of revelation if you don't have revelation you can't walk in authority so when we are reading the bible the power we are mobilizing is the power of revelation so when god met job he said declare now if you have understanding because it's when you have understanding that you can command things that they will obey you it's on the premise the reason job was mighty it's not just because his name was job they say as i was in the days of my youth when the secret of god was upon my tabernacle he say, 
I, he said, by light, I walk through darkness. By revelation, I walk through darkness. He said, in those days, when the rock poured out rivers of oil unto me, he said, my feet was planted in butter. The power that Job commanded was on the, on the premise of revelation. And that kind of power comes when the word of God opens to you. The second kind of power you generate from the world is called iskus. Iskus is an authority that you have because you are submitted to authority. He said, when your obedience is fulfilled, then you shall avenge other disobedience. So when you begin to study the word of God, the word of God brings government over your life. The reason you are not fornicating is not because you are afraid of your wife. The reason you are not committing adultery is not because you love your wife. It's not just because you are afraid that something will happen. It's because there is a law that is over your soul. You have seen in scripture that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So every time the devil tries to push you, the word of God becomes a law over you. When you begin to function under the government of the world, there is a power impacts upon your life. It's called iskus. That power is what makes you challenge these demons. That power is what makes you challenge this principality. Because when the princes come to you, they will find nothing. If they come to you and they find something, you can't rule over them. That kind of power that brings you under government is a power we call iskus. That's what Paul meant when he said, Be strong in the Lord. And in the kratos of his iskus, in the power of his might, he said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against all the wise of the devil. The reason many people are still ruled by principalities is because they have not won iskus. There is a power that comes upon you as you do business with the word of God until you become a slave of the world. And when you become a slave of the world, when you speak, your words carry authority. The third kind of power is metanoia. It's a power for transformation so that you become. It's gotten from the word metamorphosis. So once upon a time, you were an angry man. And because of your anger, the devil can manipulate you. So every time the devil wants to get you, he gets somebody to provoke you. And in anger, you open the door and the devil comes in and manipulates you. Once upon a time, your pride was your weakness. So every time the devil wants to rule, rule you, he tampers with your pride. And in, in pride, you open the door. There is a power that will make you become unsuccessful to the devil. That power is called transformation power. It's the word that does it. But all of those ones are on the corridor of the world. The corridor of power that I'm talking about tonight is the one generated by prayer. The one generated by prayer is usually explosive. It's not just something that transforms you or brings you revelation. It's something that makes you become a weapon. And that's why when you begin to pray, the first power you generate for your destiny is called dunamis. That's the power to cause changes. When a man carries dunamis, the power boils on him like fire. He can come to a place and you say, your job is, your, your business is not working. In the name of Jesus, he is violent. Because that power is an explosive power. It's a power that causes changes. If a man does not pray into dunamis, he will still be limited in destiny. So when we go to pray, we are looking for dunamis. So that when we come out of prayer, we can look at our family and we say, things will work and things will begin to work. When we come into our shop, our goods will naturally begin to sell. Not because a prophet came to pour oil, but because every power that stagnates our possibilities, the moment we show up, that power goes away. That was the kind of power Jesus came with from the mountain of prayer. The Bible says as he entered the sanctuary, he said demons began to flee. He didn't say, I am the son of God, get out. He carried too much energy that the moment he showed up, on their own accord, they left. It's called dunamis. When Zion begins to travel, Zion begins to generate dunamis, the power to cause changes. It is that dunamis that makes your life work. So much so that even if the whole world say you will fail, they are wasting their time. Because without talking, there is something you are emitting. It's called dunamis. When you see men fail, it's because they've not generated enough dunamis. You may be singing. Singing is enough to make you succeed. All you need is to add dunamis to it. And when you sing that your one song, even if the people around your environment say you will fail, the first place they will hear that song will be in America. And then they are wondering, how are these things happening? Then you will tell them, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. That thing that shall be born in you shall be called the son of the highest. Don't be afraid of failing. All you need to do is generate power. When you generate enough power, even if hell wants to pull you down, they are too late. Because having spoiled principalities and powers, 
he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them by the cross so in prayer we enter into power the second kind of power that our prayer generates is called kratos kratos is dynamic power the reason this light is on is because kratos is at work kratos is the product of dunamis when dunamis goes to work it's called kratos it is the dynamic expression of power you know before i came into this hall i was generating dunamis the moment i collected the microphone dunamis turned to kratos this volatile power i'm talking with is no longer dunamis this is kratos when dunamis becomes dynamic it converts to kratos it is kratos that actually does the work but we never see kratos in your life until you generate dynamics some people go to work they don't know what to do it's because you lack kratos the bible said the people were hungry for three days and they came to jesus and say let's send these people home and jesus said if you send them home they will faint on the way you give them something and they wonder how can you feed these people even a year's wages will not be enough it's because they lack kratos because the Bible said in John 5, 5, that he himself knew what he should do. There's a dimension of wisdom that comes upon a man's life because he's generating the altar fire. And then when everybody's confused, he himself knew what he would do. Not because he's studying in Harvard. It's a power that is at work on your inside. What do you have? He said, there's a young lad here with two loaves and five fish. He said, bring it. And the moment he collected it, he said, I thank you, oh father. Instantly, he gave it to them in their own hands the miracles began to happen he didn't even want the miracle to happen in his hand so that they will say it's because it's jesus it's why they were distributing that the bread was multiplying because he has commissioned them by power when a man prays he's generating power if you are not generating power it's because you don't know how to engage the prayer altar the prayer altar is not time oriented the prayer altar is power oriented and sometimes when you begin to pray and the sequence and the protocol of power is about to be activated it will demand concentration because when power wants to flow it is from creatures of higher energy level to creatures of lower energy level so when you see people who don't know how to generate power they'll be praying in tongue and they are distracted and they'll be distracted for three hours that's why they pray they don't have power but men who know how to generate power from the place of prayer sometimes they face the wall because the next person praying can become a distraction sometimes they lie on the floor because even the light in their room can become a distraction sometimes i go to pray and the light becomes so loud it looks as if the light is shouting i have to off the whole light because i want to censor into power and after a while you will literally begin to feel the current running through you this is what prayer does but for that kind of prayer to be created you must know how to pray with concentration you must know how to pray with focus because you are not just praying to meet time you are praying to generate power so when you see a prayerful man powerless he doesn't know what to do with prayer zion have traveled but zion have not brought forth our children for zion to bring forth our children prayer must generate power and the kind of prayer that generates power is a prayer that is prayed with focus with concentration the next time you go to the prayer room and you are distracted just carry your bag and go home you are not ready you will waste your life that's why i told you many are praying and they are wasting because they don't know how this thing work when you want to pray and bet number one you must pray the will of god number two you must pray with focus because the prayer prayed with focus is the prayer that generates power don't find yourself in the prayer room and you sit down you are yawning you didn't come there to yawn if you want to yawn go home don't find yourself in the prayer room and when they are praying you go out to stroll you shake somebody if somebody wants to shake you in the prayer room leave the person alone it's a distraction i didn't come here to shake hands if you want to shake hands wait until after the prayer even if it's three hours i have i will invest into eternity because i know it is in focus and concentration that something hits me many people are distracted in the altar on the altar that's why they never generate power and they say but we have been praying nothing has been happening if you pray something will happen the reason you are praying and nothing is happening you are distracted in the place of prayer and you are distracted in the place of prayer because you don't know that prayer is primarily to generate power there are different kinds of power we generate